Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and this is another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. And in this time, I'm going to show you how to set up what could be a universal gateway for all of your IoT devices. That starts now. This is something I ran across that initially wasn't on my radar to, uh, to be up front because I didn't even think that this kind of thing would even exist. And we're going to switch over here. Let's see if they, I didn't check this in advance. No. Nope. All right. Hang on. We'll make a minor keyboard change here. And then now it works. This is from the folks at Mozilla. And it's basically, they talk about building your own internet of web or internet of web things, or internet of things gateway. I, I'm not going to begin to do it justice. Here's what gets exciting. If you've not heard about the Raspberry Pi, this is going to be a very good way to get exposed to it. And here's the best thing, folks. You don't have to understand Linux. That's This has been the big thing. This is what's called, I'm going to take the lid off here. This is what's called a single board computer. Now, this is in a little bit better case than you might think about and this was a starter kit from the folks at Kanakia and th this really was very ideal it includes two things that are very handy you've got these two little silver fin like devices in here those are heat sinks and depending on what you're doing with your Raspberry Pi it could get a little warm now here's the interesting thing I I thought long and hard about doing a setup video for you but there's really not that much to it because you download, and we'll go back over here to uh, the web page. You'll download the image for the Raspberry Pi, and I've got the uh, the 3B Plus. And the reason you've got to do at least that one, I mean, it might work with the Raspberry Pi 3, but I went with the latest and greatest just to be on the safe side. And that's because it has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And that's going to become important here just a little bit. Now, depending on what you're doing with your Internet of Things, such as the LifeX bulbs or the, um, I'll say the, the Sylvanias, for example, you may need something different. And that's where the built-in Wi-Fi is going to be very handy. Some devices may need Bluetooth. But there's going to be yet other devices, especially if you looked at some of the Samsung Smart Things or the first alert uh, IoT enabled smoke detectors. You're gonna need something different. And this is where we get into what they call the USB dongles. Now, there are two dongles. There, there's a whole list of this. But what what we're gonna go into, and this is all on the website. I'm just, I'm filtering through some of this for you. There, you'll need two kinds of USB dongles. Now, this one is called the Z-Stick, or you can hold it this way. I don't know if there's a right way to hold it. Now, this is from the folks at AOTech, and this is the Generation 5. Now, this will essentially plug into the Raspberry Pi like that. Now, that will have you covered for the Z-Wave devices. That Those need to have a Z-Wave hub. And at this point, I've got, what? Three different kinds of hubs in my house, so I'm I'm looking for a way to lessen some of that with luck. Now, for those devices to support Zigbee, you're going to need yet another dongle, and this is from the folks at Digi, and it's called the well, it says XTIC 2 ZB. There's two versions of it, and this is the one that's not the mesh version; it's the regular Zigbee one. So, at this point, what you know, I'm looking at, well, you can see very quickly, this is going to get very crowded here. And I'm also concerned, well, I'll turn it up the right way and it fits in better. But see, now you're already starting to kind of get whopper jawed there. So that and in combination with the, I was concerned about the possible power supply drain on this, because let's face it, it's a single board computer and you, I'm, I don't want to push the power supply any more than I have to. Now, keep in mind, you may not have to have both of these day one. Start with just this. Get just the Raspberry Pi. 
So if you're doing LifeX bulbs, uh, some of the others that support either 2.4, and then hopefully at some point, if they're not already out there, I've not seen it yet to support 5 gigahertz, that you can start with just this. Now, what I'm doing, because you saw how these things were kind of, there was no good way because of the, the difference in form factors of getting both these in at the same time without putting strain on the USB connectors. My rule of thumb, and I'm going to take it out of the box here to show it to you, is when I start plugging devices in to a computer of any type, whether it's a single board computer or a laptop or an Intel NUC, if it's something more than a keyboard or a mouse, I start looking at going to a powered USB hub. And when I say powered, and this is, you're looking at something like this. This was on here, turn it upside so you can see it better. I went with the USB 3.0 hub just so that I had some future proofing because now anything that is plugged in here, such as this, such as this, are going to be powered by this. It's not going to be loading the power supply from here. So this is not something you have to have day one, and that's why I don't have this in the show notes as well as either one of these devices. I'm simply setting the stage so that you can see what's coming. Now, as newspaper people would say, I buried the lead on this, and I'm getting ready to, to tell you what it is, because this is the part that really got my attention. If, if having both Zigbee and Z-Wave in this device was not good enough. Here's the rest rest of it. There is a listing for HomeKit support. That's right, folks, HomeKit support. So what this means is if you get a hold of something that's HomeKit only, such as well, what the folks from Sylvania sent me, these are HomeKit only. Now, they have other models that will eventually have both. But if you have HomeKit only, now you can take one device, you can support HomeKit, you can support Z-Wave, you can support Zigbee, you can support Wi-Fi, and if something works on Bluetooth, it'll support that too, probably. Now, this is, the, the software is not for sale, Mozilla is giving it away, so you're looking about, well, depending on the, the day you get this, this is about a I got the, what was it, the deluxe kit with the 16 big, 16 gigabyte micro SD card. And that goes in right here. And we'll just get a fingernail here. So that's the kind of card that's in it. Not, not very big at all. And I've had some, I still have some original Raspberry Pis. So that, you know, this is a lot nicer. And of course, they had to start somewhere. I'm not going to criticize the folks at Raspberry Pi, and I hope I get the privilege of meeting them someday because they've really set the industry on its ears. Because this can be any number of things. So far tonight, we've talked about just this as the Mozilla IoT Gateway. There's going to be a web interface. Right now, I have not seen application support where it would be like your smartphone or tablet. But let's, you know, let's give it time. And it's you, no telling where this is going to be. This is really has, has gotten my attention because it's very compact. If you really start using this and you're really having a control of things, this may get a little warm. In that case, there's another case that you may want to look at. And, I, and I'm thinking about it. Not so much for this purpose, but it has extra fans, and so you really start pulling air through it, because this will start working when it gets warmer, but the warmer it gets, it starts slowing down. So that's something to think about, because another use I've got for this is, and you'll see this in one of the other videos, is a portable Plex server. Now, there's some you know caveats with that, but for this part of the discussion, this is going to be essentially a, a universal hub or gateway, if you, to use the proper term. So you've got this, you've got these. I mean, you're going to have one device that does everything. So especially for those of you who've been following the video series I've done on the Traveler Smart Home, this potentially, depending on how much you're traveling and how much you want to take with you, might just be the ticket. But that's where, you know, I'm concerned about, I don't want to load the power supply on this or put, you know, start running more power through the circuit board than what the designers maybe have thought about. And that's what got me looking at 
a USB hub, a powered USB hub. And I, this is kind of a standard thing for me because I had an Intel Nook that failed on me. And I think that's because I had too many devices sitting on it. I only had like four or five, but it was just suddenly it just quit working one day. So I've been very careful since then that if I have anything other than a keyboard or mouse that I'm using a powered USB hub. And see with this one, now this one's got the added feature. You can turn slots on and off individually. So when you first bring it up, you could have both of these plugged in. And I'm going to pick slots with a little bit of space on And here's why. So if you want to turn this one, you know, when you first bring it up, you want both those turned off. That's fine. Leave them turned off. And as you want to bring them up individually, you can turn on that slot. Now, here's why I didn't put them right on top of each other. Because with, the, with them being RF devices, albeit different frequencies, I wanted to have a little bit of separation in here to have some space so that you wouldn't get into a situation that, say, the uh, the Z-Wave devices only worked from this side but had some density in here. Or if the Zigbee devices could only work from here back here. I don't know what's going to happen, but it's just my with my background in in RF or radio stuff that I was just trying to err on the side of caution and have some separation. And see, this way, now they're not the stress of trying to put them within those two connectors there, because you saw how I did it earlier and how it was going to be a little bit tight. So I wanted to stay away from that, if at all possible. So, and again, this is fairly compact. I had one that I that I had been using for a while, but it looks like they quit manufacturing. So I went and found another one. This is about 20 bucks. But again, I was also looking for compactness. So the really to do the whole process, you will go to, let's go back here. And I got out of sequence with the, uh, okay, I got it on there. What you'll first do is you'll download the image here and it basically walks you through. This is the the current gateway software, and you'll notice down at the bottom it's showing, well, you may not be able to see it on, on your video, but it's, it's telling me going to GitHub and the image and so on. You download that, then you get something called Etcher, and now this is slick. You'll need, and the, the, there should be an adapter that comes with the micro SD card. You'll put the micro SD card inside of a regular SD card. You'll put it into whatever laptop or desktop you have. You'll download Etcher and I hope I'm pronouncing that right, and you'll select the image, you will then select the drive, and say flash. That's it. You really don't have to know about Linux. Uh, now, one of the, the card I've got in here, for example, is a micro SD HC card. I did run into a problem, but it's not the card's fault. The laptop I normally use is several years old. It would see the micro SD card, but it said it was read only. Once I went to a laptop that was a couple of years newer, it burned the image onto it right away. And I've used a series of utilities through different iterations of the Raspberry Pis that I've got. This one is really the, the slickest. It, you just give it the zip file, or you may, depending on the distribution you're using, you may have to pack it down to just the image, but then it goes through, it burns, and if you use the term burn, it's not really right, but that's, you know, comes from burning a lot of uh, CDs and DVDs. You, you put the image onto the card, and then it verifies it to make sure the image it put on there was what it thinks it put on there. You put the, the micro SD card back in the Raspberry Pi. Now, in first turning it up, I would suggest that you put a keyboard, mouse, and a monitor on it. Of course, there's a, if you've not seen a Raspberry Pi before, it's got a full HDMI port on here. Your power supply goes in here and then mouse and keyboard here. And I did bring mine up on the ethernet to begin with. Eventually I'll probably let it have with just the, the wireless. And really that's it there. It's taking me longer to describe how to do it than it will be for you to do it. The two longest parts of the process will be downloading the IOT firmware or image, and then burning it on there. Uh, it's because it does it in two passes. It sets up the car, puts the image on there, and then verifies it. And once it's done that, I put the SD card back in here. 
make sure the monitor, keyboard, and mouse are on it, powered up, and then just let it run. It will take it a few minutes because it has to resize the card. It's got to go through some steps to make this all happen. But it, it does it for you. You really don't have to worry about going in there with a uh, secure shell or telnet. And if you're not familiar with those, that I'm making my point. You don't have to worry about that at this point. Will it help you learn a little bit of Linux? Yes, but that's not what you have to have to get this started. So really, this is can be is this is very close to to plug and play. If it was anything else, I would say plug and pray. But this is, I'm I'm impressed. So there are I, I've tried to pick mainstream devices to work with in terms of the USB dongles. There are other ones supported, but those may end up having community support, which means you're unless you know how to do coding on your own, you're going to be uh, dependent on others coming up with a way to do it. So I tried to stick with the mainstream stuff. There's ways you can do scenes. There's timers. There's there's a lot of functionality that I haven't even scratched the surface on yet. Because, like I said earlier, what got my attention is this does HomeKit. It claims to, and I, I'm going to be working with videos that show you how to do exactly that. I'm going to show how to set up a LifeX bulb. And thank you to my viewer who pointed me in the right direction. I was saying L-I-F-X, but LifeX is... is one of the pronunciations. So that's what I'm going to go with. But you, the fact you can do it over Wi-Fi, that you've got the options of doing it with Zigbee and Z-Wave. So it literally is kind of a universal gateway. And it does connect to, to a cloud infrastructure at Mozilla. But you know what? I'm fine with that because Mozilla is going to be very careful about how they do things. I've, I've used some of their stuff for way too many years to to be serious of concern. So really, something like this starts controlling your house. Now, there'll be some devices we may find that may not work, and that may be today. They're working on it. There's always going to be changes, and that's where, uh, before I do the next video, I will make sure that I've got the latest firmware on here just to make sure that I'm showing you what, what needs to be done. So anyway, that's where we stand at this point. I'm within probably two weeks. I'm waiting for one more piece of the book to be done. I've got somebody well recognized in uh, in internet, uh, the circles that I travel in, who's writing the forward to the book for me. And once I get that, I'll be releasing the book simultaneously on both Kindle and paperback forms. A lot of the videos you see me do are going to be in the first book. I'm already working on the companion volume right now. That's probably going to be late this year, maybe early next year, depending on the number of devices that I get in. Because doing the Mozilla Gateway really surprised me. I didn't know this was there initially. I'm also going to be looking at doing a portable Plex server. Now, granted, there's going to be some limitations there, but guys, this is a single, or folks, this is a single board computer. This is not your brother's eight core Pentium overclocked water cooled system. So there, there's going to be some, some design trade offs or functional trade offs. But anyway, as, as an Internet of Things gateway, I think this is ideally suited. And there's other things that you'll be seeing me references for. So I, this is, you may end up with, like I do, a collection of these. And there's worse things that can happen. Anyway, I've gone on long enough. I just wanted to set the stage for you to let you know what was coming. And as we get along with the other pieces, I'll start showing you what you, what I have ordered. And then we will, we'll go from there. So thank you for your time. Apologize for not getting this video done earlier today, but, uh, life gets in the way as you can well appreciate it. So that's all we've got for now. But if you have anything you'd like to see me do with this, please reach out to me. For those of you who been leaving comments, you do know I do read those and I do respond to them at least as I can in a, in a timely manner. So I want this to be a win-win for everybody. So you can see this is a fairly tight little, box and it's not going to take a lot of room and also the way it's got some mounting options on the back that you could wall mount this little thing or put it on the side of a stereo cabinet it's it's very compact thank you for your time and we'll see you here in a day or two with some more videos take care for now